Hi, I'm Dave Letterman. My pledge to you, you're not going to pay a lot for this repeat. We film all the outdoor stuff in New York, but the real show is done at Universal Studios in California. Come see us on the tour. It's Late Night with David... To, uh, to, to hell with you guys, it's my lucky tie, okay? <laughs> and I had a little bit of, I had a wardrobe discussion out here earlier regarding my tie, and it doesn't look that bad now, do you think so? <laughs> Man up there dressed in ca carpet remnants, looking at my tie. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start right off tonight with a confession, and I'm not sure why I'm bringing this up, except just to make a clean sweep of things. For the last 10 years now, I have been submitting ideas to Craft World magazine <laughs> under the name of Florence Dickman. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was me. I'm sorry. But I, I feel much better, and gosh, don't we all? Mm, I don't think so, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, Kurt Waldheim, ladies and gentlemen, has now admitted, I guess uh, a couple of months ago in a magazine article or some publication, that his wife, he has now admitted, the president of Austria has now admitted that his wife was in fact a, a Nazi, but she was never enthusiastic about it. <laughs> and, and you know, in, unenthusiastic Nazis were, were really the worst kind. Uh, and in fact, she was so unenthusiastic about it that she, she stopped paying her party dues. And as many historians have pointed out, when she did stop paying her party dues, the Third Reich collapsed immediately, so... That was an awful long way to go, wasn't it? Yes. Well, here's uh, bad news on the home front. Uh, Angela Ruggiero, a longtime friend of John Gotti, was charged yesterday with uh, participating in heroin deals while in uh, federal prison. Uh, I, I don't want to sound disrespectful here, but I, I just don't like the crowd John Gotti is running around with these days. I, Uh, what a show. Oh, this is going to be called the Accent Aiguille. Uh -huh. Fine. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> and Sled. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, that's, so it's not Jack A. Harry, right? From the it, I think it used to be. I think oh, her, her actual name Jack was Harry. Jackie Harry. And then right. suddenly she decided with the, uh, the mark. That uh, the Thursday line. night, uh, 9.30, right here on NBC, will be our sixth anniversary uh, television. <laughs> anyway, it will be... Uh, uh, and also this. This was sent in by a viewer. I thought this was kind of cute, so we're going to show it to you folks now. Uh, Dear Dave, you probably wondered many times how you would look like, what you would look like, if you went full tilt on a steroid program. And they send me this uh, photograph. This, uh, this, I guess they think this looks like me if I were Samoan or Hawaiian. Can we get a shot of? There we are. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Look like me? Hell, this is me! I have even trouble doing that. I may have hurt myself doing that. Oh, boy, what a show. This is going to be good. We have a little sled in the studio. Yeah, never heard go... Care for a ride? Do you think you'll try it out? Uh, maybe not. Okay. No. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, before we get to the show, Paul, I know you have a, a guest over there you'd this like to introduce. This is a big thrill for me. All right. uh, uh, this guy really needs... By the way, does not Oh, he says all. All. Yeah. Forms. So he's a GP, general And he, he has an interest. I want, him to, I want you to hear what, what, what his term for what we are going to be indulging in later on with all the right. sled. What is it? A lugerication. What did he a little lugerication. Lugerication. Uh, yeah, it's a, my kind of a term. Yeah. Dr. John is here. Uh, the damn He's a doctor, not a cop. Paul on the whole proceedings here. Let's get to the uh, top ten list you. for you tonight, ladies uh, and gentlemen, from the home Dave, office Dave, in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, Dave. Yes, Dave. Bill. Our announcer, Bill Window. Yes, Bill. What can uh, I do for you? Sorry to interrupt, Dave. Uh, no interruption. Just sure, wanted to introduce a fellow announcer and a very good friend of mine. He's. Uh, Sitting in with me tonight, Mr. Oh, Don Pardo. Oh, hi, Don. Nice to see you. Don Pardo. Don Pardo. Glad 
to be here, Dave. Thank you very much. Thanks Tom. for having me, Dave. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for letting me borrow your tie. All right. Uh, okay, uh, from the home office in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Dave, category tonight, Dave, the top ten categories. Dave, is, yes, Dave, excuse me. Sorry to interrupt Bailey, again. One of our camera operators. Yes, Bailey, what can I do for Dave, you? I'd like to introduce you to my friend, fellow cameraman. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't get Mike Hanrahan, my fellow cameraman. I can introduce you. Mike's looking for a place. Mike's looking for a place to pull some cable tonight, so I invited him over. He's going to sit in with the crew. Oh, good. Very nice. Okay. What, a, what a strange coincidence, but yet delightfully wonderful. Okay. Uh, the top ten category Dave? tonight from the home office. David, in... I'd like to introduce yes. a friend of mine that's yes, sitting Yes, Kevin. In. May I help you? He used to do cue cards for Regis Philbin. You, you do cue cards for Regis Philbin on the, on the morning show over there? No, no, on the Lifetime Cable Show. Oh, and that's right. Anyway, this yeah. is Doug. I'm sorry? Doug. Hi, Doug. Nice to see you. Kevin and Doug. Kevin and Doug. All right, here we go. From the home office in Lincoln, Nebraska, the Excuse top me, ten Dave. category tonight. Dave? Ye yes, Hal. Dave? Yes, Hal. Uh, can I interrupt to introduce a good friend of mine? <laughs> well, sure, Hal. Go right ahead. Who do you have there with you? Uh, take one. Dave, this is uh, my friend Art Dickerson. Hi, Art. How are you? Nice to see you. I used to uh, direct Hazel, Dave. You're probably remember I, from those days. What Hazel. was that, Hal? What did you say? He used to direct Hazel. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Used to chaparral. direct Hazel, Paul. That's Art Dickerson. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. He used to direct some uh, high chaparral sequences, too. Some sequences for high chaparral. Well, he used to do the whole show at oh, times. But, I see. But a lot of times, it's just, just part of the show. Yeah, right. But, and and uh, what's that man to your uh, right laughing about? It's, uh, uh, no, Pete Padovich or... Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, there he goes. All right, Dave. I know. Uh, he's, he's, uh, there's a warrant out for yeah. that man in several. All right, would you like to call All one right. for the old, good old days? Okay, okay. call okay. one and let's hurry this let's up. Let's have a two. Okay, gosh. All right. Now. Anyway, tonight's uh, category, the top ten list from the home office in Lincoln, Nebraska. The category, Top 10 Signs That Dan Rather, Dan Rather, the voice of CBS News, the Top 10 Signs That Dan Rather is Goofy. Here we go. Number 10, took a swing at Hamburglar statue at New Haven's McDonald's, made children cry. Number 9, marketing Dan Rather's own original invisible salad dressing. Number 8, thinks the miniseries Elvis and Me is about Elvis and him. Uh, number seven, likes to sit alone in uh, office in empty box, humming to self, claiming he's on assignment. Number six, demands colleagues address him as Debbie. Number five, obsessed with temperature in studio. Oh, oh no, I'm sorry, that's, that's one of the signs that I'm goofy. I'm sorry. Uh, number four, tells some friends he really loves Bartles, other friends he really loves James. Number three, because he's not giddy with anticipation of late night sixth anniversary special on NBC Thursday, February 4th at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central Time. Uh, number two, he's actually friends with Andy Rooney. Number one, now signs off each broadcast by saying, I'll paint any car, any color for $99.95. of a nation, as Sandra on the popular series 227, Please welcome Emmy Award winner, Jack Hay. Hi, how are you? Good. Nice to see you. Boy, oh boy. You, you certainly, you're certainly dressed up. You have uh, uh, other engagements to attend to? Uh-huh. What are you doing after? <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing after the show? Nothing. Well, why, why are you dressed up like this? You know, this is the old Hollywood way, star time. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, Give you... them what they want, something to look at, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. You look great, you know. Thank you got you. those uh, jumbo earrings. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty good. Uh, now, let's... I, I hope I didn't embarrass you by discussing your name like this. You embarrassed me. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. I didn't? Uh, <laughs> you, you, your, your, your name originally was... Jack A. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't originally Jack Gay. No, well, you know, I dropped it and um. You know, what was it? Let's start from the beginning. What was it when you were 
a kid when you were like five years old? Jack A. Jack A. But it was more like Jack A. Yeah. <laughs> now it's Jack A. Uh -huh. And and but the, your <laughs> but your last name was Harry. Harry. Jackie Harry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and have you dropped the last mm -hmm. name? Complete. So you you've changed it legally. No, I'm gonna cash my check. I see. <laughs> uh, did, did your, was your family disturbed by the fact that you would drop the last name, the family name? No, no the family name is Perry, you know. Um, as a matter of fact, I went home for a reunion. It was a million Perrys that I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. But no, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. they're just overwhelmed by everything else, especially yeah. my grandmother, Ma yeah. Perry, I call her. Yeah. She's 103 years old. 103? Mm -hmm. That's She's amazing. Dead. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> And I, I went home. Where? Went no, home where is home? Where is that? Salem, North Carolina. Uh -huh. yeah. It's going flat out. It Thank is. Thank you very much. I'm trying to calm down. Uh, now, tell, now, tell me about this show. What, what exactly are we doing here? It's 227. That's the address of a, of a what? A building in Washington, D.C. Right. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm one of the neighbors. Mm -hmm. you know. And when, what is your character? What is Sandra? She used to be saucy, sassy, sexy. You know, uh -huh. now she's saucy, sassy, sexy, and sensitive. Oh, and sensitive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, wh why do we want her sensitive? So we can stretch and, and, and develop a character and let you know that she knows how to do more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd rather stretch somebody sassy, to tell you the truth. <laughs> um, whatever, the, whatever the hell. Whatever the hell that means. Okay, uh, on, uh, on uh, just about four inches off the, uh, off the surface of the ice. And you, you just lay down flat and let it go. Mm -hmm. So do you. Well. Uh, hey, stop it. Just please. I'm sorry you had to hear that. Yeah, but not for free days. No. Uh, and I'm sure you don't have enough now money. Now this, this... Uh, <laughs> I got the money, I don't have the stamina. Um, <laughs> I got a bad back. I'm sorry. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't have the wind. I got a. Uh, not the uh, right. Not the right credentials. Those now, statistics. now wait a minute. Let's get a hold of ourselves here. Um, this this character Sandra is this. Uh, is it? How did you develop the character? Is this based on anything in your life or someone else's life or a friend or any other influence there? It's based on uh, Mae West. First of all, May when West. I first got the part, I wasn't planning to stay very long because they only hired me for seven episodes, so I just did Mae West, and I kind of did a raw Mae West, you know. You ever see that? Her first movie, I think it was called Night After Night. She was starting with George Raff. She just had a little part. And you, you heard this big voice in the midst of all these men. Let me in! Let me in! Let me in! So she gets, she's like, oh, so nice to see you. Come and crawl to me, baby. Crawl to me. Crawl to me. So <laughs> I used to do that, but then as I got better into it, I did a smoother Mae West, and it was more like, uh, you know, yeah. come up and see me sometime, but I won't lay out flat for you and let it go, David. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, was, 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 was this, even if you hadn't gotten the show, was she somebody that you were interested in before the program? Yes, I love her and I love Judy Holliday. I have, yeah. those are two people I just adore. How would you describe that to somebody who was not familiar with this culture? How, well, because I have my own thoughts as to what that voice represents, but it may not be fair. What do you, what do you think that I connotes? know it won't be fair. We'll listen. <laughs> but, but, um, it's, it's, it's kind of coquette, kind of like a little girl uh -huh. who gets her way, and, but then when she's a woman, she gets away with it anyway, yeah. so it's. No, kind of cutesy, yeah, but yeah. the woman is underneath. I, I can't, I can't describe. Now, now, what do you want to do when this? I mean, you, you came in, they hired you for what you said seven, seven shows, and and you're pretty much the franchise on the thing now, aren't you? <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, isn't uh, didn't didn't you bring a certain verve to the program? And yeah, I like that word, verve. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Deal. And, and, Elon. And, 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 and what's going to become of you now? Are you content to stay with the show? Are you going no. on other things? I just made a, a three-picture deal with uh, Jerry Weintraub, Weintraub Entertainment Group, which I'm very excited about, last week. Really? So you're going to be a, a major motion picture On the star. big screen. And they give you big dough for this, didn't they? Big dough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I wonder what's going to happen. Yeah, see, I'm just stuck in this dead-end job here night after night. I <laughs> Um, you, and you just got back from vacation, you went to Europe, did you have a good time there? Because, you know, a lot of these guys are all talking, you know. Yeah. <laughs> all talking, no action, when, thank God. When is this show on, this 227 thing? <laughs> here? With Steve Martin, Bill Murray, Sonny and Cher, Cindy Lauper, and Billy Joel, plus the most incredible band ever, and the world's most stupid pet tricks. David Letterman's sixth anniversary, Thursday. Okay, here, you, uh, do this for me. Watch this show at 9.30, and I'll crawl right back into my late-night hole for another year. Announcing lotto numbers on Channel 11. <laughs> Please do. Try and watch yeah. it if you can. We'd Maybe certainly we'll, be we'll happy. Paul, oh, what the heck is going on over there, by the way? Nothing, what is uh, this? 
Nothing too much, just that uh, they've opened a new Benetton over here, and uh, <laughs> kids are seeming to uh, to really like the stuff. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, and I just got this new sweatshirt. Well, it looks very good, Sid. Congratulations. Yeah, they're they're just springing up everywhere. Yeah, I guess it so was it looks like, only uh, a matter of time until they opened one yeah. right here. We're gonna our, have a big success in our here. studio. Well, let him be good. Really happy about it. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Look who's, oh, look, look, Paul, who's here is Connie. Connie, did you see the uh, Benetton over there? Wow, it looks great. Yeah, come on over and get a sweater later. <laughs> this is uh, one of our production assistants. This is uh, Connie Plesco, and we're all very excited because I think, as you can tell, you're just about to have a baby, aren't you, Connie? Well, it should be any time now. Any time now. Yeah, that's great. You look terrific. You've got a, a tan or something. Did you go away? Yeah, Vinny and I went down to Fort Myers, Florida. Oh, that's great. That's great. You went down there to what, to, to see family in Fort Myers or what? Well, well that's where the convention was. Uh -huh. You know, the big custom van show and jamboree. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Vinny's, Vinny's really into yeah, it. Yeah, do, do you have a, a van? Yeah, we've got two. Yeah? Yeah, we drove one down. Uh -huh. Vinny calls it the Swamp Rat. Oh, the Swamp Rat. That's we great. We got an honorable mention in the overall fantasy theme category. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> what, uh, what exactly is the theme of the, the Swamp Rat? You know, primitive worlds, volcanoes, yeah. pterodactyls fighting, yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> well, that sounds beautiful, and that's what, like a mural on the, on the outside of the van? And, and on the inside. Oh, yes, well, uh, and what else did you do while you were down there? Did you have any time for any sightseeing or anything? We went on a deep sea fishing charter. Oh, that's, that's pretty fun. Did you, did you catch anything? No, but it was a great excuse to drink beer and eat fried clams all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Connie, uh, stick around and, and watch the luge run a little bit later, okay? Oh, yeah, I, I tried it a bit earlier. It's yeah. a blast. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Connie Plesko. Connie. What? What stop, stop her. Stop What's the matter, Paul? Wait a, wait a minute. What, what, what happened, Paul? What she happened? Took a, the kids took a sweater. You know how those kids. Yeah, I know, them. but Paul, you don't, you don't get any of that money anyway. No, I guess you're right. The insurance will cover it. Sure. I just, I get so damn mad at these kids sometimes. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I just. Yes. Welcome back to Pee Wee's Playhouse. Well, uh, our next you? guest is a Ooh. talented. Paul, now what is going on? Well, good news, Dave. The girl's uh -huh. mom has uh, brought the sweater back, and uh, <laughs> that's great. She's going to pay for it. That's great. Now, Paul, you're not you're not just going to keep that money, are you? Well, I'll uh, I'll see that the Benetton people. Uh, <laughs> get the and, money. and you know, I think we've all learned a very important lesson here tonight. We certainly have, Dave. And uh, why don't you tell the folks what that is? Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you, Paul. The, the lesson we've learned here tonight is that any lame piece of comedy worth doing is, is worth overdoing. <clears throat> Our next guest is a talented writer and actor who will be appearing as an expert in animal husbandry on this Friday's episode of Miami Vice. Folks, please say hello to the multi-talented Harry Shearer. Harry. Gosh, I love that. <laughs> Harry, how you doing? Dave, I... Let me just... Oh, what see, do you have there? Well, I wanted them to... See, I was hoping that this would be the evening I would announce that changing my name to Harry Jack A, but... <laughs> well, it's still I'm, not too late. Uh, Harry, let me, let me ask you a question here. Is it safe to say that you are quietly emerging as one of the nation's foremost political humorists? Would you think that would be safe yeah, to say? Yeah, it's safe to say. It may not be true, but it's safe. No, but I, I Nobody's mean... Nobody's gonna... Yeah. I, I think, Power tie, Dave. Power tie. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Harry. Um, thank you. Let me... Let me also... Let me put you on the spot here. Let me... I know you can do this. Yeah. Could we hear... A little Dan Rather. I think you're probably the only person in show business today. You know, uh, you talked about the signs that he was uh, goofy. Mm -hmm. The first one I saw was two years ago. He was doing uh, the last piece on his news was a piece about ducks in Minnesota. Right. The environmentalists and the hunters were arguing about whether there were enough ducks or not, whether we were running out of ducks. Okay, piece ends. He should just come on and say good night. He comes on with that children of the damned stare that he's got now <laughs> and says the following. Fly away, fly away, fly away home. <laughs> what the hell? Well, it's only the news. It's only the news. It's not it's like only... it's a puppet show or anything. That's right. <laughs> Good. So that was the first clue. Yeah. You now, wh what do you make? And and I know that the, this kind of thing between he and George Bush was just something that you must have relished a great deal, just for the event. Ate it up with a great big spoon. Yeah. yeah. Um, First of all, it was really the battle of the network rehearsals. Mm -hmm. uh, both these guys, I mean, for a spon seemingly spontaneous live event, 
this thing was rehearsed more, well, clearly more than this show, but I mean more than... <laughs> now, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I... We'll open the Benetton again if you don't behave. I'm sorry. Uh, Those are some good values, by well, the way. Oh, sure, I can tell. Yeah. Exactly. I went bulky with it. Uh, <laughs> now, now you, you mentioned that it was, it was essentially choreographed. Yeah. Now, how, how do we know that? Oh, there have been uh, a lot of stories that Dan rehearsed the questions with, like, a, a guy who played George Bush, mm -hmm. and George Bush rehearsed his side with a guy who played Dan Rather, which, mm -hmm. to me, opens up a whole new world of show business. Sure. You know, why... Why mess around with this television stuff, you know? <laughs> a young, uh, talented mimic like your own Chris Elliott could uh -huh. just uh, be George Bush for Dan Rather, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, just sparring partner. Yeah. yeah. So who do you think got the better of it, or is it possible to tell at this point? Or at any point? I think the book on Dan Rather is you don't mess with him live, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so did you actually see the event? I did not see it. I, I caught up account. with it later. Yeah. I caught up with it later on public television, yeah. where, you, where you have to give money to see real television rerun. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, and now another side of you, you're appearing Friday night yeah. on um, Miami Vice. Yes, sir. In the, in the part of? In the part of Special Agent Timothy Anderson of the United States Department of Agriculture. I have to say, uh, I had some trepidations about when, I, when they sent me the script, but when I saw that I would have the line, freeze, USDA, <laughs> they had me. You had to go for it. I had to go yeah. for it. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know that now this is really... And I wasn't talking to a side of beef, either. I was talking to, <laughs> to an individual. This is, uh, this is real uh, talk show fodder. I understand you did your own stunts. <laughs> it is talk show yeah, fodder. Yeah, it really I'll, is. I'll right play right along. Now, I'll play is, right along with you, Dave. This is batting practice Since here. we don't have the clip, <laughs> I haven't seen the clip, but we don't have it. Um, I did my own stunts. Uh, now, don't you feel silly even saying that? <laughs> well, not as silly as I felt midway through doing my own stunts when right. I realized, gee, I'm working for Universal, they could afford a stunt man. Oh, sure, yeah. But there's a macho, you know, it's, there's a kind of a Burt Reynolds, Hal Needham thing about, yeah, I'm doing my own stunts, so yeah. what if I get killed? What yeah. the hell? Um, well, you feel goofy in a job where you have to show up in makeup anyway. I mean, right there, that's yeah. a little, yeah. Yeah, we all do. Uh, th this particular thing was, was uh, a fantasy of errors because I had to drive a pickup truck, something I've never driven, mm -hmm. that was rigged to railroad tracks. And I'm driving this truck down railroad tracks. I have to drive, stop at a mark, which is a thing that a guy has scuffed in the dirt. And I <laughs> can only see out of my peripheral, or as the athletes say, peripheral vision. <laughs> stop. Peripheral. Peripheral. Yeah. Well, you know, the thighs go all the way up, so that's why they do that. Uh, oh, come on. <laughs> he didn't mean anybody. No. Anyway, so I have to stop lean out, fire a gun, which I never do, uh -huh. as you know. Which <laughs> well, that's, if I know nothing else about you, you know it's that, that. Yeah. sure. I'm not a big hunter. Mm -hmm. Get back in the truck, drive it back down the track, chase a guy, another actor, also doing his own stunts, who's driving an old Pontiac. He tears off one way. I, of course, am on track, so I can't chase him, so I go off in the other direction. Mm -hmm. First problem is the truck keeps falling off the tracks. Mm -hmm. I start it up, it falls off the tracks. That's a jarring experience. I would for think so, yeah. Anybody. Yeah. Uh, especially when the guy then comes over and says, Don't gun her. <laughs> don't gun her. I wasn't gunning her. I just put yeah. my foot in the accelerator. Oh, sure. no, you don't have to feather her, but don't gun her. <laughs> <laughs> so what am I supposed to yeah. Meanwhile, the guy with the Pontiac, the old car, <laughs> they can't get his car started. So like a team of Teamsters mm -hmm. comes over, get the hood up, and they're working on the car. And meanwhile, they're putting my tr truck back on the tracks. They get the car fixed. Now they can't figure out how to close the hood. <laughs> so this just goes on for you know, yeah. days and days. It's a fun show, though. Now, have you seen the, the finished result? I have not, sir. So I'm this not. will be exciting for you Friday when it comes on. It'll be very time. exciting, yeah. yeah. Uh, did you enjoy your time in Miami? It's a, it's a, it's a nice town. I don't want to, you know, it's a great country full of wonderful cities, but there's something weird in Miami that I'd never seen in an American city before. Uh, Los Angeles, as you know, has crows and seagulls. Right. A lot of cities yeah. have birds that just are native to it. Mm -hmm. Miami's the first city I've ever been to where if you look up at midday anywhere in town, you see buzzards circling overhead. <laughs> I don't know if this is the crime problem uh -huh. or what. Uh -huh. I swear to God. Well, they, it could be in marshlands. They're probably very near marshlands. marshlands that would attract them, and they're they had bleached, blown, bleached bones very <laughs> yeah, nearby. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and, and congratulations, you won the coveted Ace Award. The much-covered Ace Award. Yeah. 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 Should I explain what it is? Well, please do. Yeah. It's an award <laughs> for cable excellence. This... Now, I know, I know this man has, has made fun of cable in the past, but yeah. it was a very distinguished evening. Uh, we had 
a wide range of awards, not all the awards that uh, I thought were appropriate. There, there was not a home shopping category, for example. <laughs> Best deal on a cubic zirconia was not one of the awards. Yet. And, the, and the guys at the Weather Channel didn't win anything oh, either. Oh, well, they're being snubbed. There's a Weather Channel bias in this industry. There is, because I thought, you know, best first mustache grown by a weather forecaster <laughs> would have been a category that they could have cleaned but, up but, on. But tell them what you did win it for. It I won for best original song, mm -hmm. for a song that was in my uh, special last summer called mm -hmm. Shredding Party, based right. on Ollie North and all those guys. Yeah. And it's a, a eminently danceable but unhummable t uh, little ditty. And who, who did you do that show with? I did it with Meryl Marco. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Harry, look, we'll be looking for you on uh, Friday. Part to help our Olympic luge team bring home the gold from Calgary. And our next guest himself, a former Olympic luger and coach, please welcome from the U.S. Olympic luge team, Bullet, Bob Hughes. Bullet. Nice this, uh, we, we have uh, set up the ramp. We don't have a great deal of time, but I think we'd like a little background information on the sport itself. What is the origin of this competition? Well, it's the, luge is just the French word for sled. Mm -hmm. It's just the sport of sledding. Mm -hmm. And, and the Americans have not really done, how, how well have they done in Olympic competition? Well, in the last Olympics, we finished ninth in the doubles and 13th in the men's singles and 15th in the ladies' singles. Yeah. But this Olympics, um, things are looking up. Do we have a chance to medal, as they say? We, I think we have a fairly good chance in the ladies' singles division. Our team's looking good all the way around, though. Should go top ten everywhere else. Right. Now, again, this is a, uh, the sled here. What does that thing weigh? Uh, it's pretty heavy. You want to try and pick it up? Well, no, just tell me how much it weighs. 48.6 like pounds. I'm going to guess the weight of the sled, Bob. It was a contest. Uh, so it's a, it's a lightweight sled. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a lightweight sled, and the competitors are prone uh -huh. on their back, uh -huh. and, and for doubles, it's just you're stacked one on top of the one other. One on top of the other, men and, only, though. Men only. <laughs> uh, and and what, is, uh, what is important in this sport? What do we have to keep in mind when we're doing it? Well, the sled ha has to be driven, mm -hmm. steered. And on a course, Olympic course like the one at Calgary, maybe 60% of the time the driver is actually steering it to a certain spot. Uh -huh. And the other thing is aerodynamics. Right. The person has to maintain a, a very good aerodynamic position so the air slides over him cleanly. He'll go faster. And what kind of speeds are we talking about at Calgary? Calgary, about 83, 84 miles an hour. Now that's insane, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think we'll go quite that fast here. No, we, <laughs> we clocked it earlier and it was about 70, 71. But 70. Well, we got the cushion. Yeah, we do have the cushion. Uh, is there anything else we ought to say about the Olympic effort here? Uh, we have a chance to medal, as you mentioned, and uh, we're going to take a look at it on the, on the track here. Let's just do it. What the heck? How much time do we have? All right, let's just load it up, Bob. Go ahead. Why, why don't you get down here? I'll show you how to drive it. Oh, good idea. Okay. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just hang this up over there. Okay. That's a nice tie. Yeah, but it wouldn't want anything to happen to this. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got to slide up just a little. That's right. it. Ooh. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I like that. Huh? Right. Okay. Dad, pull me behind the car just once, please. <laughs> Okay. Oh. And, and I go back? Lay back all the way. I try to... Okay. And you'll, you'll find two little handles in here. Go all right. ahead. That's it. Get the arms are nice and tight. Mm -hmm. Got to keep these shoulders down. Now, do I look up? Do I look down? What do I do? Just look down. That's good. You've, you've done this before, I think. Okay. But the toe is pointing. Now, did you say I, I keep my eye... Come on. <laughs> stop the funny stuff, will you? <laughs> all right. Now, I just like this. That's but it. I do look up. You do look. You do. You have to look down the course, see where you're going. Uh -huh. If you want to drive the sled, if you want to steer that way, you press down and in with this leg uh -huh. and straight down with this shoulder. Right. And you can feel if you want. I feel, I feel nothing, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> but, but on this short course, we're probably not going to really need to steer much, will we? Well, I don't know. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this, this is, way? This is in a, yeah, and then it's the same thing okay. that way. Oh, okay. okay. Is this dangerous? Has anybody been hurt or anybody? No. Uh, People have been hurt, but the sport has a very good safety record. We take a lot of precautions. This is not a very popular sport, though, is it? In all deference to you and your teammates. <laughs> in America, it's not, but it's a big sport in okay. Europe. Load it up. Come on, Bob. Okay. Let's see something. Get up there. Come on. Okay. Come on. What are you doing in time? Okay. Uh, are we all set? Is this out of the way? All right, so Bob is going to show, it how it's, uh, show us how it's done, and then, and if we have time, I may try it. We have time. Here we go. Bullet Bob Hughes. All right, Bob. Good. Okay, I gotta take it back. Okay. Okay.
Now, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to push off like that. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. There, there's some truth in it. Now, did you have a helmet on, Bob? No, I didn't, but I think you might better take one there. Do you, do you really think I need the helmet, or you just want me to look like a dork? <laughs> I think you might need it. Oh, okay. 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 Now, uh, again, I'm not gonna. All I got to do really is lay here, and in a couple of seconds it'll be over, right? Yeah, well, maybe. Sounds like my honeymoon. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here we go. An An Anton, you ready here? <laughs> right, now I just let it go. That's it. Are we aimed up properly. We're set. All right. Paul, Paul, if, if anything happens, I'd, I'd like you to get the tie. Okay. Here we go. All right. Bye-bye. Ah! Oh! Oh, my God. Thank you. Look. Yeah. Ooh. Not much. We raised some money for the Olympic Luge team. We raised fifty dollars. All right. And then on January fourteenth, we raised seventy dollars. And right. I have here in this envelope the total one hundred twenty dollars. And I'm going to give this to you, and you make sure that the Olympic Luge team gets it. Thank you. Good luck there in Calgary. Thank you Thank very you. much for being with us tonight. Uh, tomorrow on the program.